Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Simple Truth Podcast. Today is episode four, and we are talking about our body, our soul, and our spirit, and all of that collectively looking at who we are, who God created us to be, and how we need to know this so that we can function in his kingdom and learn about ourselves, really. When I learned about this, it was something that really changed my life, even though it's it's kind of simple, but it's kind of also like um, a little deep. I mean, you can go very deep with it if you'd like to, but uh, it's a simple revelation that I think everybody should know, especially Christians, if they're going to try to understand how they need to live the rest of their life out and understand themselves so they can make that work so that we can, as we talked about in the previous episode, sanctify ourselves, become new, not just receive salvation, but also walk in that newness of life, not only receive it, salvation and faith, but also live by that faith and how that happens in our life. So today, today's going to be very a heavy teaching on body, soul, and spirit. And that's who we are. That's who you are. That's who I am. Each and every one of us, we are a body. We have a body. We possess a soul. And we really are a spirit. We are a spirit. And it's very hard to understand, like some of these things, like Jesus said in John 3, like we talked about last week, the things of the Spirit, they don't make sense to the natural mind. And so sometimes we just have to believe and trust the Word because it does make sense, but it just doesn't always <laughs> click. It doesn't, we can't see it naturally, we can't understand it, we can't see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, but it's there. It's there. It's like a sixth sense in a way. So we're going to jump into that. We're going to start right in Genesis today in the Word. Genesis 2, verse 7. So right from the very beginning, this is after Genesis 1, of course. Genesis 2 is giving that more story-like account of creation. And it talks about God creating man here. So in Genesis 2, verse 7, it says this, that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So we see here that God formed man out of the dust. So our flesh, God used the dust, used the earth, natural material to build our bodies. But then he also breathed the breath of life, it says, into his body. And then man became a living being. See, there's something different about humanity, right? There's something different about human beings than there is about all the rest of creation. None of creation has been able to do what humanity has been able to do because there's a difference. God created us differently. He set us apart to be made in his image and in his likeness, but also he breathed this breath of life into us. He breathed the very spirit of God into us that we would be spiritual beings. The rest of the beings, the rest of the bodies in this world are not spirit beings. They're just natural bodies, right? Like animals, birds, fish, they all are bodies. They're all formed of natural material, but they don't have that spirit. They don't have that soul. They might have like characteristics like dogs, you know, sometimes they're, I don't know. You understand what I'm saying, but there's something different about humanity. There's a intelligence. There's a, but even deeper than just intelligence, there's a, there's just something, right? There's a spirit. There's the breath of God. God created man in his likeness and in his image. So that we would be like him, right? We are not God, but we are created to be like him. We are like him. He's not like us, right? And then it also says in your relation to this, Solomon also testifies of this in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7 where he says, The dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So Solomon even had the knowledge that as we die, when we die, our bodies, they turn back into dust. They decompose ashes to ashes and dust to dust, right? But our spirit does not. Our spirit goes back to God or it goes back to hell. But either way, every person, it says in the word of God, it says that every person will be judged according to his works and the books will be opened in that day. There will be a great throne room judgment where God will judge every single person who's ever lived. He'll bring open their book because there's a book for every person of the plan that God had for their life and whether they live that out or not and the things they did, right? We will be judged according to our works. That's a very, like, that's, that's Bible. 
And if you don't know that, then that's the Bible says that everyone will be judged according to their works. First Corinthians three talks about it and it's, it'll blow your mind. But anyway, we're going back to this, that the spirit will return to one of two places and it will be judged by God. So you'll either spend eternity, your spirit, your spirit body will turn, spend eternity in heaven with God and communion restoration. Like we talked about last week, or it will go to hell, eternal condemnation, torture, separation from God, right? All right, so that's who we are. We are a body, and God breathed his breath of life into us, but we also have this soul, right? There's this in-between ground. And it's our mind, our will, and emotions is how it's often used, right? Even Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, which is your spirit, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So with all that you are, Jesus says we need to love the Lord our God and we need to love the rest of the world. We need to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, right? So Jesus said it, right? With all your heart, which is your spirit, right? When the Bible talks about your heart, which it talks about all in all throughout the Bible, it talks about your heart, your heart, your heart. It's not talking about the muscle, the physical muscle that pumps blood, right? It's talking about your spirit. It's who you are at the core, who you are, your heart, your desire, your heart. That's, that's what your spirit is. That's what your, the Bible is talking about when it talks about your heart. And then all your soul, so that's a separate thing from your heart and your mind. A lot of times those two get clumped together and we're going to clump that together today because the soul is kind of like your will and your emotions. I think it also has to do with your characteristics just like your tendencies, what you're like, your character, and that also goes along with the soul. And then your your strength, your flesh, your body, the earth suit, you might call it. So that's the three different types. That's the three different sections, the body, soul, and spirit that we're going to focus on, right? Or you might say flesh, mind, and heart. Those are other words that we use, all right? And there's really cool things that go along with this. Um and even different like realms with this, right? In the word, there's times where it talks about the heavens and the earth, but it also sometimes refers to the earth as the heaven or the second heaven and the third heaven. So the reality is, and if you do some extensive study through the word, you'll find that there's a first heaven or just a heaven, right? A second heaven and a third heaven, right? Paul talks about whether I was caught up to the third heaven in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but I was caught up in the third heaven. And so what, what there's a third heaven. So that means there has to be a second one and a first one, right? So the first heaven is actually the natural world. When God created the earth right now, it doesn't seem like heaven, right? Because often we associate heaven with third, like the third heaven, which we'll talk about in a second, but the first heaven was the created earth. Right And Eden, when God created the Garden of Eden, when he created the earth, it was good. Everything God created was good. And then even when he created man, he said it was very good. And so he created the earth to be like heaven, to be like the third heaven. So that's why we can refer to the earth as the first heaven. Because it was always supposed to be like heaven. And that's the, that was the goal of God. Now the second heaven is the spiritual realm. Or even like the soulish realm that's around the earth. That's above the earth, below the earth. Yeah, that gets a little confusing. But it's the realm around us. It's the spiritual realm around us. Right? The reality is that the spiritual world is around us. It's even more real, I would say, than the physical realm. Because the spirit realm is where God dwells. God is spirit. And those who worship him, those who connect with him, those who give their lives to him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so it's not about our flesh, but it's really about the spirit because the spirit, God is spirit, created what is natural. And so the spirit world is even more real than the natural world we live in, even though we always tend to live by our natural um, tendencies or our natural inclination, our natural senses, because that's just our first nature. Wow, I didn't even realize that before, but it's our first nature. It goes with the first heaven. All right. Praise the Lord. Second heaven. Fresh revelation right there. Second heaven 
right? The spiritual realm around us. I'm going to read from Daniel just to prove this point here. Daniel 10. And Daniel at this time, he's praying and he's fasting. And he's asking for the Lord for an answer to his prayers. And this is what happens. He has an angel show up to him. Which still happens today. There's testimonies of people encountering encountering angels. I gotta find Daniel here. Here it is. Daniel 10, verse 12 through 13, and then we're also gonna look at 20 through 21. It says this. This is the angel speaking to Daniel. It says, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael... The angel, the archangel, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So this angel, it doesn't necessarily specify who this is. Some people think it's Gabriel, the messenger angel, but it could be just another angel because it doesn't say. But an angel appears to Daniel and says, Do not fear, like every angel says, right? But from the first day you set your heart, right? Set that thing, that spirit within you to understand you, you, your passion, your desire was to understand that your words were heard. And I've become, I've come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, right? Now this angel is not talking about the literal prince of the kingdom of Persia, right? Because this was a, a new nation that was arising at this time. The, the Pers Persians and the Medes. But he's not talking about the literal prince Right? Because angels don't fight with people in the natural. Like, they don't fight with flesh and blood. So what is he talking about? There is there is a prince in the spirit. So a prince of Satan. Right? An army of Satan that is controlling this Persian kingdom from the spirit. And this angel said, I had to war with him for 21 days. And it was such an intense war that Michael actually had to be sent to fight off this other demonic prince over this region so that I could come through and give you this message from God because your words have been heard and from that first day I've been trying to get to you, right? So we need to understand that, you know, sometimes things don't happen right away because there's a war in the spirit going on and you have to stay in the fight because of the words you speak, because Daniel kept praying, kept fasting for 21 days that's when the angel was able to get through that word, the words he spoke, the prayers he prayed, kept that angel fighting to get through those demonic forces in the spiritual realm, the second heaven, to get through. So that's just proof that this is real, right? And then verse 20 through 21, he talks about it again. He says, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. So he's telling of even future spiritual things that lead to physical things because he's talking about this prince of Greece that's going to come. Well, after the the kingdom of the Persians and the Medes, the kingdom of Greece rises. So he's saying that, you know, after this prince of Persia, we're going to be fighting the prince of Greece. And he already knows this because there's not, there is, I don't know, it's hard to describe time in the spirit. It doesn't really exist, but it also kind of does. I don't understand it, but it's it's real. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I hope we're not going too deep today. I know this is the Simple Truth Podcast, and I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can, but I also need to use the word, the simple truth of the word, to explain these spiritual things, right? And the more we apply ourselves to the word to understand, and we just take what the word says at face value, okay, that's what it says, that must be real, because we... All of us have experienced, I think many people have experienced spiritual things, and whether they've chalked it up to being a spiritual encounter or not, um, that's what it is. Right? There's demonic forces. Demons didn't go and crawl under all the rocks when Jesus died. Right? The apostles were still casting out demons. Demons are a real thing in the world today. I've seen them cast out in my own life. I've prayed for people, seen them cast out. It's an amazing thing to see people set free from the power of the enemy. Right? Praise the Lord. So the spiritual realm is wheeled. That's the second heaven. Now let's talk about the third heaven. The third heaven is what everybody wants. And rightly so, because that's where God dwells. The third heaven is when we think of heaven, when most people say heaven, they're thinking third heaven. 
like the throne room of God, the place where Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. Praise the Lord, we're all going to be there one day. If you've put your hope and faith and trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation and you're living according to um, his plan for your life, his will, if you're living out the word of God, not just being a hearer but a doer also, right? That's our hope. That's our patient endurance, that we're going to live with God. We're going to go to live with God. Hallelujah. That's the third heaven. I don't think we need to talk about that one too much. Now, the, th the second thing I want to talk about, we just talked about, and I hope you got that, that that first heaven was our body. That's the body realm. The second heaven is more of the soulish realm. And that's where the demons, right? If we, we just talked about demons, maybe that's a new subject to you. But the demons, that's where they attack you. They attack you in your soul. Your spirit, it's either dead or it's alive. And we talked about that last week, what salvation is. When your spirit comes alive, it's alive to Christ forevermore. Unless you deny him, unless you walk away from the faith. Right? Because there's verses in the Bible, I believe, that you can lose your salvation. Because there's verses that back it up. But we're not going to spend today there. Right? But as long as your spirit is alive, you're putting your living by faith in Jesus Christ and the Son of God, then the enemy can't do anything to take that away. Take that away, right? Jesus said that. My love is stronger than anything else in the heavens above. Wow. In the heavens above and in the earth beneath. And everything in the natural realm, nothing can take my love away. Nothing can take you away, right? Besides your own choice to deny Christ, right? So once you're born again, the only thing that the enemy can attack, the demons, the spiritual realm, the second heaven can attack is your soul. And so that's that second level, the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, the soulish realm, right? And that's where they attack. That's why depression and anxiety are so common today is because people don't have an understanding of it's not them. It's not really the f yourself, right? They talk about chemical imbalances. I think that can even be in, in, um, influenced by spiritual things, by the enemy's attack, right? The enemy hates us. We are created in God's image. The enemy hates God. He was cast down out of his presence, out of the third heaven, and now he's caused to dwell here on earth, right? And now he's doing everything he can to attack the human race, so that we wouldn't go to live with him, but we, that we would have to suffer for him, with him for all eternity, right? That's, that's the devil's plan. But the enemy is attacking our minds. He's attacking our thoughts. He's always trying to confuse. And that's why the soulish realm is, is such a hard place to war in. That's why depression and anxiety and all of these things of the mind, mental illness is a real thing. But it's also not just a mental thing in your head. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's not just a chemical imbalance. That's what I got to say about that. So I hope you can understand. I hope you can take that. That's what the word says. That's what the word says. The spirit that the Lord has given you is not a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So when, we, when our spirit has become alive with Christ, alive to Christ, we receive the same spirit the spirit of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, right? That's the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We receive power, love, and a sound mind. That's the spirit we've received. When we are renewed to Christ, we receive a sound mind. Now, am I saying that if you're struggling with depression and anxiety, that you're not saved? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there's a sanctification process, and we're going to get to that in just a second. We're going to explain that with the soulish realm as well. So there's the body, the soul, the spirit. Okay, now let's get back to where I was going. I hope I didn't just jump off there, but we're going to start with this. So our body, soul, and spirit, there's a process going on here where our spirit, we talked about this last week, has been redeemed. Our spirit is made alive to Christ. It says we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Jesus said that those who believe in my word, who trust in my word, they have already received re eternal life. You don't actually have to wait to receive eternal life. If you've put your faith and trust in Jesus, you have received eternal life. You are living your eternal life in the spirit today. You are alive forevermore to Christ and you are dead to sin. Praise the Lord. Praise God. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. I love God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Take a little praise break there because the Lord is so good. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, right? 
All right, so we are redeemed in our spirit. Now here's the second part. We are being redeemed. We are being sanctified, right? The Bible talks about a sanctification process, maturing in the faith, not always being a baby, but becoming mature in the faith, mature in the spirit. But that that takes a renewing of the mind. Romans 12, let's go there. Romans 12 verses 1 through 2 talks of the body, but it also talks of the mind. Renewing. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not conform to this world, but be transformed, be being transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing, the constant renewal. It's not just like, boom, it's done. Your mind's renewed. It's being transformed by the renewing of our mind. It's a process. It takes time. And even with spiritual things like this, like some of the things that I've been teaching you guys and talking about on the podcast are things that it took time for me to come to like, I don't know about that. And then I don't really understand that. But after a while, I keep going back to the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God to believe that. And now it's just like, you, you're not going to change my mind about it because it's in the word, but it's also been written on my heart by the Holy Spirit. So praise the Lord. And if there's things that are happening when you're watching this, that you're like, I don't know if I really believe that. That seems a little out there for me. That's all right that you're in that place, but at least open up your heart and your mind and go back to the word of God. Study it out for yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you and he'll do it, right? So being transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So when we offer our bodies as living sacrifices. Lord, take my life, take my by my body and take it as a living sacrifice. And I'm going to renew my mind. I'm going to let it be transformed. Then we get to understand what the perfect will of God is and we get to live that out. Praise the Lord. So we're being redeemed, we're being renewed, we're being transformed in the spirit of our mind, in this in the sense of our mind. And there's a sense that we will be redeemed. So we're redeemed in the spirit, being redeemed in our soul, in our mind, in our thoughts, in the way we think. But we will be redeemed in our body. We know that our bodies are flesh. They're dust, right? We talked about that already. And they will return to dust. But there's going to be a new spiritual body, right? It talks about uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about we will receive a new body and it's going to be a spiritual body, a body that's not corrupted. We're going to put off, oh, this is such a good verse. I should read it. <laughs> we're going to put off the corrupt and we're going to gain the incorruptible. Let's read it a second. It's 1 Corinthians 15. Hopefully I can find it. Yep. Verse 42 says this, so also is the resurrection of the dead. So this is what happens when we rise from the dead. The body is sown like like a seed, right? Sown in corruption, but it's raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor, but it's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, but it's raised in power. It's sown a natural body, but it's raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Praise God. The word says it. Right? And then it goes on to talk about Adam and Christ, and we talked about that last week. But just before that, it's, it's saying clearly there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. So right now we're living in our natural body. Our spirit is within us. It's who we are. And we're going to receive a spiritual body that's incorruptible. It's glorious. It's powerful. And it's spiritual. So that's what we have to look forward to, right? <laughs> We played basketball yesterday, and for the first time in a while, just because I don't work out very much, I was sore. But praise the Lord, we can look forward to never being sore again in heaven, right? Even if we play all the basketball we want in heaven. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But you get what I'm saying, right? We're not going to live in this natural body anymore. We're going to have a glorious spiritual body. We're going to be like Christ in that sense that we'll have that spiritual body. It talks about that in the word. All right. So there's pretty much our introduction and we're 25 minutes in already. All right. 
So our body, our soul, and our spirit, and it lines up with uh, the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. And it also relates to our state of redemption, right? Our spirit is redeemed when we believe and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Our mind, our soul is being renewed. It's being redeemed by the transforming, by the submitting ourselves to God, to the word. It's being renewed. It's being washed. It's being cleansed. It's being sanctified. And we will be redeemed in the bodily sense. We will receive a new body. Right? Praise the Lord. So let's talk about a few more things and then we'll close this out. Um, where do we want to go here? Let's go to Romans 7 and 8. This is a critical passage. Um, critical passage for me, especially. When I was starting to learn about this, when I was... It really helped me understand myself because Paul says things that uh, really resonated with me. And I know they'll resonate with you too because we all go through this. We all, we all struggle. We all fight our flesh. We fight our flesh. That's the struggle. That's the struggle is our flesh. All right. So what does it say here? Let's start at Romans 7 and we're going to get into Romans 8. But let's start in Romans 7, verse 17. I love the discourse of Romans 6, 7, and 8. Uh, so if you're looking for something to read, read Romans 6 through 8 sometime. It's, it's really good. Praise the Lord. It's all good, but that's really good. Romans 7, verse 17, it says, But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. So his will, like the, what this means is, I have the will. I, I, kn I don't want to do what my flesh wants to do. I'm willing, I'm wanting to not do what my flesh wants to do. So that's present with him. My, for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find or I do not know. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, that dwells in my flesh. I, then, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, according to the spirit, the inward man. Sometimes it talks about the inner man in the Bible, and that's what it's talking about. Or, yeah, praise the Lord. But I see another law in my members, in my flesh, in my body, warring against the law of my mind, even in the mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my flesh, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So he's saying, in my mind, I want to do what's right, but this flesh I live in, it's got sin in it. It was born into sin. That flesh that doesn't go away, but we have to crucify it. We have to put the sinful desires on that cross and crucify it with Christ. That's what it means to take up your cross every day, to deny the desires of the flesh. It's not this burdensome thing. It's just putting your flesh to death. It's crucifying your flesh because your flesh has sin dwelling in it. And it's this battle back and forth. And just as Paul was like, just explaining this, like there's this battle in the flesh and it's in my mind because I want to do the right thing, but my flesh won't let me do it. I end up doing the wrong thing, right? How many times have you felt like that? I know I used to feel like that all the time, but then the answer to this issue he gives, which is first of all, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But then he also talks about the true and the better answer and the fullness of that answer in Romans 8. And he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin of death. So the law of the Spirit of life, this new covenant that we have with Christ, is a law of spirit. It's the spiritual life. It's being born again in the spirit. And it's made you free from the law of sin and death. So since you've received this new spirit, since you have received the spirit of God as a son and daughter of the king, you are no longer under the law of sin and death. You no longer have to live under that condemnation 
under that that death. You get to live in the law of the spirit of the life. The spirit will bring so much life. Oh, if you'll have communion, relationship with the Holy Spirit, it will bring life and life to the full. Jesus said the enemy came to steal and kill and destroy, but I came to give life and life abundantly. Praise the Lord. Let's keep going because this is amazing. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. He put it to death. He said it's no longer a thing. Like he condemned it. He got rid of it. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the thing of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God. For indeed can be. So Paul is saying we can either, like he's making a distinction here, right? We can either live according to the flesh or we can live according to the spirit. And they're two separate desires. They're battling against each other. But he's also saying whichever one you choose to live according to is where your mind is going to dwell as well. And so there's a, there's a battle. And the battle, I believe, according to the scripture, it's really pointing out the battle is over your mind. Right? Once you've been born again, you're, you should be wanting to live by the Spirit. But we have to go through the sanctification process. We have to start renewing our mind by the Word of God, by the teaching of the Spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He can renew us and set us free in, in even in just a moment. And so our mind will align with whatever we are being led by. Our mind will align with whatever we are led by and whatever you're feeding Whatever, if you're feeding your flesh, if you're giving into the flesh, your mind's going to think about those things of the flesh. But if you're feeding the spirit, you're getting in the word, you're praying to God, you're worshiping, you're living your, God, your life set apart to please God, you're living according to the spirit, your mind will think about the things of the spirit more and more and more. And that's that renewing that we need to have. And it says here to be carnally minded, to be fleshly minded, to let your mind go to the things of the flesh, it's death. But to be spiritually minded, it's life and it's peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. So it says, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're living in the flesh, if you're living by the desires, the lusts of the flesh, it is really impossible to be pleasing to God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. He's commending us. Do not live in the flesh, live in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, live in the Spirit. Come to the spiritual life. Come to life and peace. He's in there. Awaken Him. Get rid of the things of the flesh. Purpose in your heart today that you're going to get rid of the things of the flesh. That you're going to come alive to the Spirit. That you're going to put those fleshly things to death. And you're going to do whatever you have to do. You're going to crucify that flesh. Sometimes there's things we have to give up. We have to stop. This is... You're on your daily convict on your own conviction. You have to figure this out what you have to do. But I'm just going to give examples here. You have to stop drinking. You have to stop going out with those friends. You have to stop associating yourself with certain people. Your soul is worth too much to be worried about what other people think about you. Your soul is worth too much. Having life and peace is worth too much to be worried about what other people think about you. So give up those things. Give up the, the fleshly things that you're indulging in. That maybe it's Netflix. Maybe it's this, the series that you're watching. Maybe it's movies. Maybe it's whatever. The more and more you, can, you set yourself to live according to the word of God, according to the spirit of God, the less and less the things of this world are going to seem satisfying to you or life-giving. It's just going to seem like, ugh, like, I don't even know what I'm doing with my life. Like, let's go read the Bible or let's... Go to church. Let's worship. Let's read a, a spiritual book. That's life. That's peace. That's true life. Let's live for Christ. Let's get other people saved. Let's preach the word. Let's, let's do things that give others life. Let's not always think about ourselves or just worry about our own comfort, right? It's just a constant process. I'm not saying I'm perfect in it. 
But I'm saying that the, that's what the Holy Spirit wants. And so when I lean into the Spirit, that becomes my desire. When I'm led by the Spirit, I come in alignment with His thoughts, with His will, with His emotions. And I get to live true life. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. If Christ is in you, the body is dead. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So if you're looking for life today, look to the Holy Spirit. It says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same Spirit, that raised Christ from the dead, he lives in you. And he will give you life, even in your mortal body, even in your flesh, he'll bring life to it through the power of the spirit that dwells in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that's Romans 7 and 8. Whew, praise God. Walk in flesh. Oh yeah. Um, let's see. I think we're going to close it out today. I think we did what we need to do in today's episode and it's getting to the mark of that time. So I, I pray and I hope with you guys again that if there's something that you heard today that your your mind was just like, nope, that's not real. That's not right. Like what? I've never heard that before. I just encourage you again. The way I explain it is that I, I had to go through the same process. I had those same thoughts and I still do at sometimes when I read the word or when I hear somebody preach something that I've never heard before, but it's in the Word, so then i got to go back to the Word. If it's in the Word, i got to submit myself to it, right? I, I'm not going to give myself to the traditions of man. Okay, there's one more verse we're going to go to because this one's good. It's Colossians 2, verse 8. We'll end on this one. Colossians 2, verse 8. Hmm. And it says this says beware so watch out that anyone would cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world and not according to christ for in him dwells all the fullness of the godhead bodily and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power so he's saying, be, beware, watch out that anyone would, would try to cheat you. Would anybody cheat you from full life in the spirit through the philosophy, just human ideas and human understanding and empty deceit, just lofty words that don't really mean anything or bring any life. According to the tradition of men, a lot of churches build what they do off of the traditions of men. This is what we've done for this many years. This is what our forefathers taught us, so we're going to just keep doing this. But there's no life in it. It's dead religion, and it stanks, and it sucks the life out of people. People, like my generation specifically, do not want dead religion anymore. They're looking for spiritual encounters, and that's why New Age is on the rise. That's why all these spiritual things are on the rise, because people are looking for something real. They're looking for life. But the only way you'll ever find it is through Jesus Christ and the power of his spirit that wants to come and dwell and live within you and have rule and reign over your mortal body so that you don't have to live by the flesh, but you can live according to the spirit. You can live in life and peace and joy and have a sound mind. It's all possible. It's all there. It's the grace of God. It's the gift of God for you to receive by faith today. So submit yourself to the word. Submit yourself to the spirit. We are slaves to Christ slaves to life submit yourself to that today purpose in your heart to do it and then make a plan make a plan set a goal set a thing okay i'm gonna spend this much time every morning with the lord reading the word and i'm just gonna let the word renew my mind i'm gonna go back over these things and i'm just gonna renew and i'm gonna purpose in my heart i'm gonna ask holy spirit to help me to teach me to lead me and to guide me and we're gonna walk this life out we're gonna be renewed it's a constant process, right? This, this soul learning, this renewing of the mind, it's a constant thing. Putting the flesh to death, it's a constant thing. None of this happens in, in a moment. There's things that will happen in a moment and God will move on you and change your life in moments. But it's also a process. It's a constant 
walking on the straight and narrow path. And so set some goals, set some plans in your life, in your daily life that are going to keep you on that straight and narrow path, that are going to keep you in that renewing of the mind until Jesus Christ comes again and we get that glorious heavenly body and we get to go to the third heaven and then he makes all things new even here. Praise the Lord. That's you and I's inheritance as sons and daughters of the King. So I thank you guys for listening. If you made it all the way through, praise the Lord. Thanks for listening. I, I love each and every one of you. Um, if you'd like to give to the podcast, you can find that um, on the website. You can find that on anchor.fm slash simple truth podcast. If you go on there, there's a link to the website. You can give there or you can even give through Anchor. Um, I would love to do more and more of this. I, I love doing these teachings. And uh, yeah, so if you'd like to give to that purpose, if you'd like to give to the spreading of the truth, then you're more than welcome to do that. And we're going to do, I talk about, I tell you guys this every time, but we're going to do a section or a episode on giving and why it's important. The Lord has, that was something like as we're talking, here's a te short testimony. As we're talking about things that I needed to be renewed in my mind in, giving was one of those because I had never been taught about it growing up. I, w I grew up in church, but I wasn't taught about giving. Why do we do it? Um, yeah, where is it in scripture? And what's God's command? Because everything God commands, he does for a reason. He does for good, not for evil. He, he wants to help his people, not harm them. And so giving is a hard thing because people like their money and they like to have it, which is, it's a necessary thing. But God wants us to trust him in all things. And so giving is a part of that. And there's a promise that comes with it. And we're going to talk about that in the future. So I thank you guys. If you, if you do give, I thank you for it. I really do appreciate that. Um, eventually, I'm going to want to have my own equipment. Right now, I'm sharing with some people. And I'd love to have my own equipment. Um, but the Lord provides all needs. So we're going to trust the Lord for that. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I don't know what next episode will be, so look forward to it. Stay tuned. Love you guys. We'll see you on the next one.